Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Now, the first step to wholeness is very simple. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. I love that, those three words. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So can I just take a minute and say, yes, to everybody in here, anybody here who's not yet come to Jesus, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that at the close of our service. And if you've not received Christ as your Savior, then please, 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 tonight, just come to him. Just, you don't have to be all fixed up. It's a come as you are party. Just come to him. Just come. And if you're watching by television, please, if, you're, if your life is messed up, if you're overloaded with stress and you're overburdened with fears and worries, just come. You don't even have to un understand anything. Just come and say, okay, Jesus, I'm coming. Just take me the way I am and do something with me. I want you in my life. It can be the simplest prayer that you ever prayed, and prayer is just simply talking to God. So if, if you believe God is there, if you even believe it a little bit, just give him a chance to get into your life and see what he can do. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, then even after you've received Christ, when you get into this laboring, struggling kind of life that God doesn't want you to live, the answer is just stop it and come to him. Come back to him. One of the reasons why we don't have the peace we should have is because we don't take enough time when we're upset and frustrated to just stop for a minute. I mean, even if you're a mom at home trying to raise three or four little kids and you feel like you want to tear your hair out by nine o'clock every morning, just take a little two-second break and say, I'm coming to you, Jesus. Now, John 7, 37, it says, Now on the final and the most important day of the feast... Jesus stood and he cried out in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. I love that. So here he's saying again, look, if there's anything that you need in your life, anything that you is hurting you, the answer is come to me. You know, it's so simple that we miss it. We would rather sit around in groups and try to figure out what we should do. I always tell people, don't go ask somebody else what you should do. They're probably not even doing a very good job of running their own life. And now you're asking them how you should solve your problems. Go to God first, and if he wants to use somebody, let him use them. Now, here is some of the best news that you've ever heard, especially for those of you that have not yet come to Christ. So just bear with me for a minute. John 6, 37. This is just like so good. This is a yummy scripture. All whom my Father gives and entrusts to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will most certainly not cast out. I will never, no, never reject one of them who comes to me. Whoa, I like that. Woo! I mean, is that not a great scripture? Anybody who just comes to him, he says, I will never, no, I will never reject not one of them who just comes to me. So you see, you don't have to worry tonight if you think, you know, I, I do want to get this thing right. I'm, I'm going to give my life to Christ. I want him to come into my life. Don't, don't be even concerned that he won't take you because you've done too much wrong. He will never, not ever reject you. When you pray, he never says, no, I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> when you need help, he never says, no, go away, I'm not helping you. But the enemy tries to make us think that he does sometimes, doesn't he? Can you say tonight, I will never be rejected? Never be rejected. Say it again, I will never be rejected. Never be rejected. Say, God will never reject me. Oh, I'm liking that. That's feeling better all the time. God will never reject me. God will never reject me. Now, do you know to some people, 
That's life-changing news. And I, I just feel in my heart that there are people watching on television in different parts of the world, and it's like, you gotta be kidding. He'll take me just the way I am? Yes, he will take you just the way you are. And you know, there's a number on your screen that you can call and we'll have somebody pray with you. You can receive Christ right this moment. You don't have to wait one minute longer. He's got his arms open wide and he's saying, come to me. Come to me. Now, Jesus came to give us life. Life with a capital L. Let's look at John 1, 4. And in him was life, capital L, and the life, capital L, was the light, capital L, <laughs> of men. Why are they capitalized? Because they're talking about Jesus himself. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it abundantly to the full until it overflows. Now, this life that he's talking about is not just a breathing mobility life where you have the ability to walk around and you breathe some air in and out. If you look up the word zoe in the Greek dictionary, here's the meaning. So exciting. I actually wrote it out here in longhand on my paper. It's life as God has it. Can you wrap your brain around that for a minute? How many of you think that God's worried tonight? How many of you think he's concerned about what's happening in the world? How many of you think that God is upset? <laughs> that he's frightened? No, he has, he's so full of life that none of that can even get into him. And that same kind of life is offered to us. Life as God has it, that which is in the Father that he gave to the Son and that which the Son manifested to the world. Man was alienated from it through the fall and man becomes a partaker of it in Christ. It is his present possession through his relationship with Christ and it is not just to be mobile but to have moral power such as holiness and righteousness. Isn't it amazing that God can take an outright, full-time, especially wicked sinner and give them a seed of life and turn them into a holy, righteous child of God? Yeah. How many of you think that's pretty good news? <laughs> so I ask you really, what do we have to be unhappy about? And you know, I think sometimes we miss some of these wonderful scriptures in the Bible. You know, if you just ever take the time to just look up the word life, it's just like, it, it's astounding what it says about life. Now, the kind of life that I'm talking about is a life that like, whew, there's something going on in here. And I'm not saying you gotta be like slappy happy every day and going around, oh, ding, ding, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad. I'm talking about that, that you get up and you've got the, you've got the energy to wanna get up and live. You wanna, you wanna keep things around you nice. You wanna be good to people. You wanna take care of what you own. You wanna take care of yourself. You're looking for creative ideas. You wanna get out and do something good that day. Thank God we don't have to get up anymore and go, Oh, God, I just don't know if I can make it through one more day. This is just more than I can take, God. If I don't get a breakthrough today, I just think I'm going to go over the edge. Life. <laughs> life, as God has it. Life, Zoe, life is on the inside of us. It comes initially in seed form when we receive the Son of Christ, the Son of God, the seed of Almighty God comes into our spirit as it's watered by the Word. And see, even tonight, I'm watering what's already in you with the Word of God, and it's going to sprout up and grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're going to, you're realizing things tonight. It's like, you know, if I, if I explained this life to you and I said, 
Now, everybody who wants to stay after, I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give shots of life. <laughs> How many of you would stick around? And get, you'd roll that sleeve up and get your arm out. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm not giving flu shots tonight. I'm, I'm not, I'm giving shots of life tonight. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And that life becomes our gift through relationship with Christ. Thank God I've got a reason to be alive. And I love to watch what the Word does to people. You know what's going to happen tonight? Somebody that's depressed is going to get set free. Somebody discouraged is getting encouraged right now. Somebody that feels like that you can't take it one more day, right now that life is hitting you and like, I can put up with anything I have to put up with because the greater one lives in me. You see, we got something going on on the inside and it's trying to work its way to the outside. Amen. And I'm in there helping the Holy Ghost tonight trying to push that good fruit out. Life. Life as God has it. Now, I'm going somewhere. Stick with me. 1 John 3, 14. Actually, we've already been a lot of places, but we got a beginning here, an ending, and right now we're in the middle. We know that we have passed over out of death into life, capital L, by the fact that we love the brethren, our fellow Christians. He who does not love, abides, remains, is held in and kept continually in spiritual death. Wow. So here's the thing. We've got all this life in us, this Zoe life, the ability to have this amazing life but the Bible's saying, if you don't learn how to love each other, then it's all going to be bottled up in you. And you're going to be full of spiritual death. But here's the way that you can know that that life is yours. When you learn how to love people, love and life with a capital L are the same thing. So can I just suggest, if you're mad at anybody, get over it. If you're not believing the best about people, change your mind. If you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. If you're offended, get over it. <laughs> Come on, you're not looking as happy as I'd like you to look. Well, it's just not fair. Okay, can I tell you what's not fair? The thing that's not fair is that Jesus had to go to the cross and die for a bunch of people like us. That's what's not fair. All the rest of it we can deal with. God is a God of justice, and he will make wrong things right if we put our trust in him. Amen? And I'm not saying your pain is not important to God. I'm not saying that the people who hurt you are right. But I'm telling you, we got to stop this stuff. we got to start really loving for Jesus' sake because there's a world out there that's dying and going to hell, and they are not being impressed by our bumper stickers and Christian jewelry. we got to have the goods. we got to know how to walk in love and treat people right. So the next time you're talking to some of your Christian friends and somebody says, oh, well, you know, they're whatever, Denomination, well, you know, they're, they're Pentecostal. Well, Mike, you know, she speaks in tongues. You know what, why don't you just speak them and say, you know what, we don't know anything about them. We don't know what kind of relationship they got with God. Let's just not judge and criticize people. Let's all be one in Christ. Amen? Amen? You know, I might be pretty nice if you really got to know me. You never know. All right, now, how in the world do we get to this love? <laughs> it's a nice word, makes a good sermon, gets a good shout, but how do we get there? How do we finally get to the point where we can walk this thing out in our daily life? 
2 Peter chapter 1 lays it out for us very clearly. See, we're talking about tonight being spiritually healthy. You come to Jesus, and then you set yourself to dedicate your life to him to learn to do things his way instead of your own way. This is not like a, a tweet. This is going to take a few minutes, okay? So stick with me. You can do it. For his divine power, I'm in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. Through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence. Well, you have to kind of take that apart to get full value. But he's saying God's power, nothing that we've done, but God's power has given us everything that we need to live an amazing godly life. So, you got everything you need to live a great life. Everything. It's all in you. And it comes to you through the full personal knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, don't be satisfied with any secondhand faith. Don't be satisfied to call somebody else up to look up your scriptures all the time. Get in your Bible and find them for yourself. Amen? Every time you need prayer, you don't always have to be the one in the prayer line. After a period of time, you ought to be the one praying for the other people. It's not that we don't all need prayer, but I'm trying to make a point that the deeper we come to know Christ, the more we realize these things. By means of these, verse 4, he has bestowed, that's like given, us his precious and exceedingly great promises so that through them we may escape by flight from the moral decay, the rottenness, and the corruption that's in the world because of, and I love this, selfishness, covetousness. So he's saying the whole mess that goes on in the world, all the rottenness, all the corruption, it's all there because of covetousness, because of lust and greed and selfish self-centeredness. It's all there. But we already saw that we've been delivered from that through the death of Christ, right? Come on, say, I can be set free from me. Say it again, I can be set free from me. And become a partaker of the divine nature. So I can be set free from me and I can actually begin to live and act like God would want me to. I can act like his child. For this very reason, now, the next four, five, three, four, five verses I'm going to read you are very important because it says, now here's what God's given. Now how, how do you get it released in your life? Are you ready? For this very reason, add your diligence to the promises. Employ every, uh-oh, effort <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> a lady asked me the other day, and this is just classic. She said, how, do you, how can you stay so fit at your age? I said, well, I work out three times a week, and I pay attention to everything I put in my mouth. And she said, oh, darn. And you know, that, we got to be careful about that, that we want, we want, we want, but we want it all to be just kind of given to us by osmosis. We don't want to have to do anything to get it. Well, isn't there any way that I can have muscles without working out? Is there any way that I can just shovel food in day and night and eat anything I want to and still look like Twiggy? No. Not unless you got a disorder. <laughs> oh, help me. <laughs> and employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, 
Christian energy, and in exercising <laughs> virtue, you will develop knowledge and intelligence, and in exercising knowledge, you will develop self-control, and in exercising self-control, see, you, you've, some of you have already lost me. <laughs> you will develop steadfastness, patience, and endurance, and in exercising steadfastness, you will develop godliness, piety, and in exercising godliness, you will develop brotherly affection, and in exercising brotherly affection, you will finally come to Christian love Here, just let me tell you, I don't care how many wonderful messages I preach to you about leaving here and going out and loving everybody. It ain't going to happen. Not unless you get this list out. <laughs> first thing you got to have is knowledge. The first thing you want to know is Him. Not just what God can do for you, but to know Him and the power of His resurrection, to know the character of God and how amazingly wonderful He is. And to get so thankful for your salvation that you can't hardly stand yourself. And then you add more diligence and you exercise. And you add more diligence and you exercise. Let me tell you something about this book. My words, they are spirit and they are life, Jesus said. Now, I think that I have certainly not the corner market of revelation on the Word of God, but I understand the power that's in the Word. And that's why, that's why I do what I do. Because I watch the Word of God change people. I watch it change the looks on your faces. I watch it when light comes into somebody's eyes when you're sharing the Word. I watch the tears sometimes that flow when people finally get it that God loves them and it's not too late for them. I hear the testimonies that come in time after time after time after time. I know the power that's in the Word. But I also feel that I have got a mandate from God at this time in my life to also share with you that I don't think you can get out of this amazing book what you need if you just always and only let somebody else spoon feed it to you. You need to have your Bible, you need to have your time with God, and you need to study yourself and stop letting the devil convince you that you cannot understand the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you. He is your teacher. And that's why we challenge people to start for 30 days, 30 minutes a day, taking one verse at a time, teaching, showing people the amazing things that's in the Word of God. Because I, I, I God just showed me one day, he said, we, you tell people all the time, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. But people read for quantity, they don't read for quality. It's just like this, this race, you know, well, I, I want to read so many chapters a day so I can, I read, I read the Word today, praise God, you got to read the Word every day. Well, what did you learn? <laughs> Anything? What did I learn? Anything? And so, please don't think that you're going to ever have the kind of life that God wants you to have just because you read a tweet in the morning. <laughs> A Facebook post, you listen to a 15-minute sermonette, or you happen to visit a church pew once a week and you sit there and sleep through half of the sermon, and then you wonder why you don't have any victory in your life. Come on, there's something for you to fight for. There's a life that's worth you living. There's a life, there's something to get up for. There's a reason to get up early and spend time with God. Your life. Well, how would you like to be healthy in every single area of your life? You know, I think we would all just say, yes, I would love that. 
Well, you know, it requires being healthy spiritually first because everything else comes out of that. hacía escondida de todo, pero yo con 13 años lo pillé. También escuchaba como a veces él le pegaba. Entonces, eh, si bien mi mamá siempre trató de mantener la familia como en secreto, esas cosas. Que no, que era fea, que, no, que nadie me pescaba que no había esperanza en mí, que mis manos eran feas, mi cara. Me miraba al espejo y lloraba. Dos veces traté de ahorcarme. Well, at Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, we are honored to work alongside Teen Challenge to help people break the chains of addiction and to see all that God has created them to be. Patricia and Norbert, would you begin by telling us about the need for a home like this here in Chile? Well, we have uh, the situation with uh, the women growing up in atmospheres where men abuse them. And through that abuse, women are turning to drugs like never before. The men beat them up, they turn them into slaves, they make them do the drug runs. And so they are afraid to, st to step out. They are afraid to go back to their families. It's a nine to 12 month program. We have a curriculum that gives them step-by-step -step discipleship in which they can grow in Christ. Once they're mature enough, they are reunited with their children. And when they live that dream of being free from drugs and being free from those things that cause them to turn to drugs, then they can be the mother that they need to be. Jimena, you are such an important part of all of these women's stories because of the way that you play a huge role in their healing. What are some of the particular troubles that women are dealing with? La necesidad de amor, del abrazo familiar, del abrazo de alguien que te ama, lo que buscan, lo que necesitan lo que transforma, porque mis manos eh, son instrumentos de Dios. Y esta es mi familia, ellas son mis hijas. Cuando supe que Él me perdonó, a pesar de que le hacía daño también a la gente al vender droga, eso me, me sentí súper porque alguien me amaba. <laughs> you said before that you couldn't even stand to look in a mirror because of how ugly you felt. What do you see now? When I'm working, many people come to me and say, Oh, that smile, you have something special. A ver que it's special. And one time I stopped and looked at the mirror, but I looked at my eyes. And he said, I did this. What an amazing privilege to see the way that these women are blooming, the way that the beauty that God has put in them is now coming out so that they can see it. And when you help a woman, it flows over into her children, into her families, and it changes so many lives. That is what Project Girl is all about, sharing the beauty and you can do that with us right here in Chile as we've been talking about and in many, many places all over the world. You know, 
the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Vind je het moeilijk om te bidden? Te ingewikkeld? Bidden kan zoiets moois zijn. Praat met God eenvoudig over alles. Een boek van Joyce Meyer kan jou hierbij helpen. De kracht van een eenvoudig gebed. Leer hoe je met God over alles kunt praten. Je kunt het boek De kracht van een eenvoudig gebed nu bestellen via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of telefonisch op 026 20 22 100.